seven big changes to the highway code taking place. If you are wondering why this has happened, well, there's a few reasons out there. The, probably one of the main ones is it's in preparation for the automated vehicles that are going to be coming our way. But it was also in dire need of an update with more and more cars getting on the road every day. This is just putting more and more people at risk. So it did need a serious look over. So the biggest change in the highway code is actually the highway code hierarchy. This is essentially a pyramid, putting the most at risk at the top, which is the pedestrian, followed by the cyclist, followed by the horse rider, so forth, with the larger vehicles at the bottom. Now, this might not sound that important, but it really is. Because if you end up in a collision with someone above you in the hierarchical pyramid, whatever you want to call it, the responsibility for that collision will automatically fall on you unless you can prove otherwise. Now, this might sound like common sense anyway. However, if you haven't checked the seven new rules that have just come into practice, you could end up in hot water. Do not forget to check out my Patreon in the description below where you can actually find a written version of this video if you prefer. Let's crack on. So I'm going to break each of these seven down into a before and now and a penalty just to give you a bit of an understanding of what each one actually means in English. So the first one is drivers no longer have priority at junctions. So before, if you were driving, if you were turning left at a junction or right or at a roundabout or anything else or turning into a road, unless someone was halfway across that road, you officially had priority over the pedestrian. Now, however, that has changed. If there is someone higher than you in the hierarchy and you are turning left, right or whatever at a junction and they are waiting to cross or actually crossing the road, they actually have priority over you. Essentially, you need to stop and wait for them. As I said before, the penalty for this is if a collision or something does happen, you will automatically be held responsible unless you can prove otherwise. This is obviously automatically going to affect your insurance policy with the possibility of court costs, fine, penalty points, and it goes on from there. All traffic must stop for pedestrians waiting at crossings. This includes zebra crossings and every other crossing out there. So before, the rule was that if someone was already crossing on a zebra crossing, the vehicle would have to wait. That has now been updated that if someone is preparing to cross, waiting to cross, or actually crossing, the vehicle must stop and wait. What's the penalty if you don't? Well, if there are any witnesses or anyone has this on dash cam or anyone records this on the phone, they're well within their power to send it to the police who are then well within their power to find you an issue with a charge or penalty points, etc., etc. Number three, cyclists are now encouraged to ride where they feel most visible. Before, cyclists were encouraged to cycle on the left, but now they're actually encouraged to cycle where they feel they are going to be most visible. This means cyclists are basically being encouraged to cycle more towards the middle of the road so the other vehicles can actually see them. Cyclists are, however, encouraged to cycle further to the left on quieter roads and at busy junctions to allow more opportunity for safer overtaking. What is the penalty for this? Well, they're giving the police far greater legal power to protect cyclists. And more and more cyclists are wearing body cams every single day. So if you're not following the rules or you're dangerously overtaking a cyclist, you could very end up with the police knocking on your door. Number four, drivers must wait for a safe gap when overtaking the flow of cyclists. Before, there was no explicit rule that drivers must treat cyclists as another vehicle. That has now changed. This is saying that drivers can no longer cut across cyclists. If the cyclist is planning to turn left or a cyclist is planning to turn right, you must wait behind the cyclist, not cut them up. Now, this may sound obvious and it probably is, but they've now put it officially into the highway code. The penalty for this is drivers are legally obliged to give way. And if they are caught not doing this, there is a 70 pound fine. Number five, all handheld devices are banned except in the event of an emergency. So mobile phones have been officially banned since 2003 for making calls or texts. However, there was a bit of a loophole in the code when there was no mention of photos or video recordings in there at all. This has now changed. You are unable to use your phone for any such thing as videos, photos, games, even if the vehicle isn't moving. It does say, however, you can use it for paying at toll booths, hands-free phone calls, and satellite navigation. However, the phone must be securely fixed. So penalty for this, there is a £200 fine if caught using your phone, along with six points as well. 
Please do remember that if you are a newly qualified driver in your tourist <laughs> in your first two years of driving a car, if you receive six points, you will automatically lose your license and have to start the whole process again. Number six, poor driving decisions are now far more punishable. Well, this means when people are entering those yellow box junctions that explicitly say do not stop in them, or they drive the wrong way up a one-way street, or any other such minor infringement, local authorities have now have far more power to issue a fine immediately. The fine will normally be around 70 pounds unless you're in London where it is apparently going to be 130 pounds. Okay, number seven, my favorite, the Dutch Reach Around. Who came up with the name the Dutch Reach? If anyone knows why it's called the Dutch Reach, please get it in the comments below. Why is it called the Dutch Reach? So this one is to attempt to decrease the number of cyclists getting hit by the car door. So what we tend to do is when we're getting out the car, we're talking to the passenger or just daydream, we just open the door and boom. Cyclist goes straight into the door. This is now changing. We are now being encouraged to, to do what is known as the Dutch reach, or what I like to call the Dutch reach around. Essentially, this means using your furthest hand, which is my left hand, to grab the door handle, which encourages me to turn my body and actually check my mirror and check out my back window. This is going to decrease the chance of me hitting a cyclist a lot. What is the penalty if you are caught not doing the Dutch reach around? Well, this is only guidance, so absolutely nothing. However, if you do have a cyclist go into your door because you have not looked when opening the door, you may very well find yourself in hot water. So my advice is be really, really careful. I am Josh, the driving instructor, and this has been a pleasure. Till the next time.